From the previous lectures, you have learned that Kubernetes is a super cool container orchestration tool that gives various awesome features when our containers are deployed onto a Kubernetes cluster. You have also learned the rich resource or object model starting from pods all the way to namespaces. In this lecture, you will learn the Kubernetes architecture or the Kubernetes architectural components that make up a Kubernetes cluster. If you ask yourself a very simple question, who is responsible for maintaining the state of all these objects, pods, deployments, services on a Kubernetes cluster, then understanding these architectural components will become very easy. A Kubernetes cluster is divided into nodes. Every machine on a Kubernetes cluster is called a node. These nodes can be physical machines on your organization network or they can be virtual machines on your organization network or anywhere on the cloud. We have master nodes and worker nodes. As the name itself says, the master node is the one which is responsible for maintaining the entire cluster state. So to start with, we as developers or DevOps engineers will use command line tools like kubectl or we can also write programs that can access this master nodes API server. So the API server is the heart of every Kubernetes master node. It simply exposes a RESTful web service API that can be consumed by tools like kubectl from the command line or we can also write programs to access it. Through these kubectl command line tools or programs, we tell the API server what we want to do on the cluster. It could be creation of 100 pods through a deployment. When we tell that, this API server will store the desired state into this state management database called etcd. So the etcd or etcd is a key value pair database that is used to maintain the state of the cluster. It not only holds the desired state that was told by a developer or DevOps engineer, it also stores the current cluster state. So these worker nodes will tell the master node or the API server what is the current state of that particular node. All that information will go into this etcd. So at any point in time, this etcd database will have the desired state that was requested for and also the current state of the cluster. So as a developer, if we have requested for 100 pods through a deployment and all those 100 pods were created for us, so that will be the current state and also the desired state in the ATCD. But at some point, if 10 of those pods go down, then the current state in the HD will change to 90. That is when the control manager component jumps in. The control manager component on the master node manages various controllers. Each controller is responsible for maintaining a particular resource on the worker nodes. It could be a deployment, it could be a service, it could be a pod. So each controller knows how to maintain a particular resource. The job of the controllers is to run in an infinite loop, check this at etcd database to see if the current state and the desired state is same. If not, they will ensure that the current state of the cluster will become the desired state. So when 10 pods go down, the controllers know that by looking at the etcd and they will start bringing back 10 other pods for us through the scheduler. So the controllers will work with the scheduler. Scheduler knows which node, which worker node has the resources to run those 10 pods or 100 pods, how many other pods we want. And uh, it will pick the worker nodes on which the pod should be created. So that is the master node. A master node has API server, etcd, which is a database, then the controllers which look at this database, make sure that the desired state and the current state of the cluster are same. The controller man control managers will use the scheduler, which knows which worker node is free. They know because the C advisor you see on the worker nodes, this is the component on the worker node, every worker node that will be looking at the CPU usage, the disk space usage, and it will communicate that information through this kubelet component to the API server. So the scheduler, by communicating with the API server, knows the present state of a particular worker node, and uh, that is how it will assign the pods to a particular worker node depending on their load. Then we can move on to the worker node side of it. These are the guys who does the majority of work in a Kubernetes cluster. The key component here, like the API server, 
here we have a kubelet the kubelet is the one which will launch the containers create the pods when it receives the instruction from the api server and it also communicates the current node state to the api server so when c advisor tells that this is the cpu that the node is consuming right now this is the amount of memory disk space we have all that information will be communicated to the master node so that the scheduler can make a decision of using this particular worker node or another worker node on the cluster next we have the runtime the container runtime the most popular one is docker but you can use any other container runtime so when you set up a kubernetes cluster on your all your nodes you will be installing docker or any other container runtime for your organization one other important component is the network proxy or the proxy component as the name itself says this is the one which is responsible for enabling the communication across the kubernetes cluster when you have learned about the service object in kubernetes you learned that service allows communication across pods containers and even outside the cluster so service internally uses this proxy component for that communication to happen so at a very high level you can um, look at this cluster and say that the master node is the one which gets the work done it uses api server its d database control manager and scheduler to do its job and the way that it works we as programmers or devops engineers will communicate with the api server which is a restful api whatever we ask to do it could be creation of deployment service etc that information will be stored in the etc the controllers will keep looking at the etc database they are responsible for creating all those resources on these worker nodes through the scheduler the scheduler knows which worker nodes are free then we move on to the worker side on the worker node we have kubelet which is the main guy which creates the containers pods etc and it stays in touch with the api server kubelet takes the help of the container runtime to launch containers and also c advisor to know the current cpu usage etc all those metrics will be sent to the master node as well proxy on the worker node is responsible for enabling the communication across the components and resources or objects in the cluster video helpful please do comment and share if you enjoy my teaching style do check out my full stack learning paths for java python angular react along with devops tools like docker kubernetes and amazon web services you can find the latest links to these courses with maximum discounts applied by going to my website www.bharatthipireddy.com keep learning sharing and growing